Spiders, it is Sunday. Um, I do want to apologize for not posting a video on Thursday. You see, on Thursday, I was pretty sure that it was Wednesday. Um, it's been a really long week, <laughs> um, so I hope you can forgive me for this. Among many other things, um, I am very firmly within the Kalinda zone right now, which is not as much fun as the name would suggest. So there haven't been a lot of videos this week. Um, there haven't really been a whole lot of videos all month. Um, and I was sort of hoping that I could rely on one of you guys to bring up something that I would want to talk about in my videos. Uh, but that hasn't really happened. Um, so that's okay. So today I am just going to talk about the question that I sort of posed but not really last week in my video. Which is, why is it that The Fault in Our Stars speaks to me? So with this I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life and you're going to get some insight into my crazy brain. Um, so I should probably apologize for that in advance. Um, I hope you don't think less of me in the morning, uh, but let's go ahead with this. So when I was in high school, starting at about my junior year, um, within the next three years, 12 people that I went to high school with all died. Um, and I, I didn't have a very huge high school. My graduating class was like 120 people, which isn't tiny, but it's not gigantic either. Um, I knew three of those people personally, um, and, and uh, the 12 of them all died in very different ways, um, just really running the whole gambit. Um, and then also, uh, when I was 14, 9-11 happened, um, and that was when I was just sort of becoming, like, socially aware of the world at large, um, so that was sort of, uh, interesting introduction to the world, I suppose. Um, and then also, in, uh, the years immediately following high school, I had, uh, quite a few people, um, quite a few very significant people in my life walk out of it in some very sort of impactful ways. And, and kind of all of that put together with my crazy personality um, has given me this sort of like constant awareness that the end is nigh. Like nothing lasts forever, death is coming. And that has definitely shaped my view of the world. Um, there is a line, I think it's in the very first chapter of The Fault in Our Stars, where Hazel says to Augustus, um, if the idea of your mortality bothers you, I suggest you don't think about it, because most people don't. Um, and that's not the exact line, but that's the gist of it. Um, and, and I think that that's true. I think most people um, just don't think about it. Just don't think about the fact that things end. Um, but I am not one of those people. And I know that there are other people like me out there that are just constantly aware of this ticking clock hanging over your head. That the end is coming. Whatever that end might be. Um, and that has sort of become the way that I make decisions. One of the ways that I make decisions about my life and about what I'm doing and about the people that I associate with. I just put up that situation and then end it with death is coming. And then it sort of puts everything in perspective. Like when I decided to leave my home state and leave my school, it was, uh, the thought process there was sort of, you know, I just spent the last year of my life and I have absolutely no outstanding memory from it except that it was miserable. And do I want to continue doing this for the foreseeable future? Because death is coming. Is it worth continuing this friendship with someone who doesn't bring anything into my life except for unnecessary drama? Death is coming. Is it worth getting angry over the fact that my roommate wants to kick me out of the house because she has friends that are coming into town later in the month that want to use my room for two days? Death is coming. Did I mention it's been a long week? It occurs to me now that this is actually a really great pickup line. So, do you want to go back to my place? Oh, but we've only just met. Death is coming. And then you couple this whole is it worth it, death is coming mentality uh, with another major theme that was in the book that Sarah touched on a little bit, um, that the world is not a wish-granting factory. Um, no one's gonna bring the good things to you. It's not gonna be set to you on a platter. And yes, some wishes do come true, but the world is not a wish-granting factory, so if you want something, it's up to you to do it. Um, and, and having these two ideas, because these two things together are kind of my exact 
perspective on the world. Um, but having these th two things together uh, has led some people to call me a pessimist, uh, which I think is a rather unfair observation. Uh, I, I'm just very aware of the fact that nothing lasts forever. I feel that clock constantly, um, and it informs my decisions, and it makes me very aware of everything that I'm doing and exactly where I am at my point in life. And all of that kind of comes together to add, to create this mentality that I, I don't have time to waste on people or situations that don't matter or that are bad for me or that are toxic or that are just not interesting. Um, because there's so many good things and, and it makes those good things so much more valuable because they can be fleeting and, and th they're things that you earned, they're not things that just came to you by chance. Um, so I, I, I'm not a pessimist, um, I, but I'm not an optimist either. Because the world gives us so little, and everything is so fleeting, I just can't pretend that things are good when they're not. That that I, I, I can't do things just because we're supposed to do them, or, or because everyone else thinks it's cool. I, I can't pretend that things are good when they're not. Um, but with that, it gives me a, a greater appreciation for the good things that I do have. Um, I, I actively appreciate things in the moment, and when I love something, I love it with everything inside of me, because you only have it for this little bit of time. Um, and I'm not suggesting that anyone else needs to adopt my particular point of view, but this is the way that I see the world, um, and, and I don't think that it's a way that um, very many people see the world, um, and that's okay. I just felt like sharing today. This wasn't really about the book at all. I hope you weren't coming to this video looking for um, for a book report or anything of that nature. Um, but it is the end of the month, so anything's up for grabs. Um, in the comments or in video responses, I would like to know, because we I don't know that this has actually been talked about because it's been so much looking for Alaska versus The Fault in Our Stars. Um, if you did love The Fault in Our Stars, why? Um, sort of in the same way that I answered this question. Not, you know, I liked the characters or something like this, but like, why personally did you like The Fault in Our Stars? Just a reminder, we only have three days left of discussing The Fault in Our Stars, and then we move into The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. Um, it's only 95 pages long, so if you haven't started reading it yet, you can definitely power through it before the first of the month. I'm only, like, 20 pages in, and I'm not even worried. So uh, definitely get on that so you can continue this discussion with us next month. And Dan, I will see you tomorrow.